Let's head up to Cessnock in the Hunter Valley of New South Wales and catch up with Labor's Resources spokesperson, Joel Fitzgibbon. Thanks for joining us again, Joel. You would have been a drummer in, in your day, wouldn't you? Uh, Chris, I'm, I'm smiling because I was just thinking that I spend every day beating the drum of common sense. <laughs> well, you, you have beaten the drum of common sense within the Labor Party on uh, energy policy and climate policy. I'll come to that in a moment. But just before I do, this idea of the Aussies stranded overseas, they want to come back. I think there's a unity ticket on that. Your leader, Anthony Albanese, saying it's the, the federal government's responsibility. Get some planes out there and bring them back. The real issue here is the states... Shouldn't Anthony Albanese and people like yourself be getting on to Anastasia Palaszczuk, to Mark McGowan in the West, getting on to the Labor Premiers and ensuring that they do lift the quotas and allow more Australians to come back? Anthony Albanese is representing a very strong community uh, view, Chris. Uh, I have them in my electorate too, I'm sure. Every member of Parliament, every senator has representations almost daily about these 23,000 Australians stuck overseas and there are some pretty heart-wrenching cases there. So, obviously, this is predominantly a Commonwealth responsibility. I understand that those caps aren't even being met, so that's not the real problem. The real problem is really just getting them here. People can't get flights. They keep getting bumped off flights. Some flights uh, they can get, but they're very, very expensive. So, I think Alba is doing the right thing, putting pressure on the government to do more to help these people. Yeah, no, I think, as I say, good on him for raising the issue and pushing it, but uh, we obviously need the states to handle more people in quarantine. There's signs that's happening. Of course, the real problem here is Victoria. After Sydney, Melbourne is the set, would be normally the second largest entry point, but it's all had to be shut down there because of Daniel Andrews' stuff-ups of quarantine. No, the, the airport capacity is there. Not only is our doing the right thing raising it, uh, if you saw Michael McCormack finally stand up uh, on it today, that is the Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, that was because of the pressure Alba has been putting on the government. I reckon there's 23,000 families around the country at the moment thanking Anthony Albanese for doing so. Now, I couldn't give you the date, uh, Joel Fitzgibbon, but uh, it was either early last year or uh, early this year or late last year, but uh, on this very program, you talked about how a 2030 emissions reduction target was kind of redundant for the Labor Party and you ought to sort of skip that and just look to a longer-term policy. It looks like you're going to have your way with this draft platform that's been leaked. Well, certainly uh, in this COVID period, because uh, all of our attention, all of our focus, all of our thinking has to be uh, on just about one thing only, that is the economy uh, we might inherit if we form government going to be a very ugly economy and how we might revive that economy, keep people in jobs, create new jobs and allow people to pay their mortgages. That has to be our focus. We've set the net zero, zero emissions target. That's a good thing. Uh, we've got plenty of time to think about how we might get there. I've said many times the past, it's easier as more and more technology comes into play. But at the moment, it's, it's about jobs, jobs and jobs. Yeah, the thing is, though, that, that seems to be an admission that higher reductions, emissions reductions targets are an economic burden. Yet in the lead-up to elections in the past, Labor's been telling us, oh, no, it doesn't cost anything to reduce emissions more. In fact, it delivers all these wonderful green jobs. Well, there is no doubt in my mind, Chris, that we're trying to rush ahead uh, of the rest of the world and being too ambitious uh, on climate change uh, will have a negative impact on the economy, not a positive impact. Now, done slowly uh, and assuredly uh, and with the proper planning and with the right ambitions and the right timelines, uh, then it can be, of course, a net positive for the economy. And we must ensure it's a net benefit for the economy. But at the moment, we need to focus on jobs and job security. Now, does that mean that you support what uh, Scott Morrison has announced regarding a, a gas-fired power station in your bailiwick? I'm claiming credit for it, Chris. Uh, I've been talking about it for three years. Scott Morrison has been busy running political games with respect to the Del, the Del Power Station uh, in my electorate. All that time he spent uh, bullying and arguing that the Del uh, should or could be extended uh, was wasted. He should have been spending that time uh, on a gas plan, on gas fire generation, on battery storage, on pumped hydro. But no, uh, he played the game and he's still perpetuating that game by saying, I'll only build a gas-fired power station 
uh, if in seven or eight months' time AGL doesn't capitulate uh, and build uh, and extend the Dell. Well, he knows that the Dell will never be extended. She's 50 years old and out of puff. He shouldn't be waiting. He should be committing to building a gas-fired generation, a generator in Curry Curry uh, now. And, of course, he, could be, he should be doing all possible to facilitate AGL's plans to build a gas-fired generator in the Hunter. We want and deserve two gas-fired generators in the Hunter. We want to remain the powerhouse of New South Wales, and we can do so with gas and pumped hydro and with storage. Now, so you're obviously very pro-gas. That makes a lot of sense. It wasn't very long ago, maybe two or three years ago only, that those on the green left, on the hard green left, uh, were pro-gas. They saw this as the transition fuel to full uh, renewable uh, economy. Uh, uh, and, but now they seem to be hardening their position. They, they, they see no role for gas. They're opposing this. <laughs> and they're also opposing the push to open up other gas reserves and keep it here for domestic consumption rather than export at all. Uh, do you think those policies, too, are worthwhile for the government. We do need more gas developed in this country. And now, Chris, they want to pull out our heaters uh, our, and our hot plates. Uh, exactly. In, in, our, in our homes. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Look, the, the thing people forget about gas is that about 37% of gas consumption in this country uh, doesn't go to electricity generation. In fact, a little bit more uh, goes to industry, manufacturing in particular, to be used either as a heat source, as a feedstock, or as a feedstock into the manufacturing process. Ammonia nitrate, which we rely upon for the coal mining industry, is made out of gas. Our fertilizer, the fertiliser our farmers use is made out of gas. Our plastics, petrochemicals, you name it, there are plenty of them. So we need gas. Uh, we need that gas, Chris. We need it for manufacturing and for jobs. And we need it to firm our electricity system as the, as the older coal-fired generators withdraw. The best way to get more renewables into the electricity sector is to get more gas-fired firming power into the electricity sector. You can also do it with pumped hydro and with battery storage, but the quickest way and the quickest way to create jobs is to do it through gas-fired generation. But you quite rightly mock those who want to get rid of our gas cooktops. That's uh, the campaign run by the Labor Environmental Action Network. Lean, uh, your colleagues. Well, I make no apologies for those comments, Chris. <laughs> Good on you. Thanks for joining us, Joel. A great pleasure. Joel Fitzgibbon there on uh, some of the, the uh, changing dynamic in Labor. He's had a big win there for common sense when it comes to their climate policies and their attitude to gas-fired generation and gas exploitation more generally, as you just heard there.